Hey everybody, this is Ryan Mowry with a stock market bubble update. All right, let's get into it here. You had the S&P 500 yet again up on the week. It was up 2.7%. That's a big move for one week. You also had the NASDAQ. It's continuing to rebound off of those recent lows back in March. It was up 3.9%. That's the NASDAQ 100 to be specific. You had the NASDAQ composite. It was up 3.1%. Then you had the Russell 2000 down 0.6%. So what does that tell you on the surface there? It tells you the FANG stocks are leading the market higher. It's pulling the S&P 500 up, and the fact that the NASDAQ 100 was up notably higher than the NASDAQ composite by 0.8% tells you that the FANG stocks as well, plus Microsoft, was what was pulling the NASDAQ higher as well. Yes, you had some other software rallies that were pretty big this week, but primarily the main focus, because of their market cap, it was the FANG stocks that was leading the market higher this past week. And that's most notably seen in the Russell 2000, which has no exposure to the FANG stocks. It was down 0.6% on the week. So the market left the Russell behind, which has been the market leader, quite honestly, going back to November. We also on the week had the lowest trading volume in equities going back to October. So that was a, that's a pretty dramatic move there. There's less and less buying going on, even though we're actually still marching higher. It just tells you there's not a lot of sellers out there either. Also means that volatility is dropping. I mean, check out the VIX, the volatility index. We're trading at the lowest levels since pre-COVID back in February of 2020. But on the flip side, it's still elevated from its historical average of 14.9. So at 16.69, we're still slightly elevated from a historical perspective. Again, it wouldn't really surprise me on the VIX if we continue to see this thing drop in the weeks ahead and getting back down to like the 11, 12 range. But I take a lot of grief from a lot of you folks about me calling this a stock market bubble update. Well, it is a stock market bubble update, and I feel obligated to continue to remind you that we are in a stock market bubble each and every week. That's why I call it the stock market bubble update, and I'll continue to do so until the charts dictate otherwise. That doesn't mean it has to come in the form of a crash. Maybe it just comes in the form of a consolidation over a couple of years. I hope that's not the case, because that would be kind of boring. I much prefer a big sell-off, because you can short those market consolidations like what you saw on Netflix and Amazon for over the past six months have been pretty dull up until just recently here. But when people get mad at me for calling it a stock market bubble update, it's really touching on their own nerves. It's touching on their feelings and their fantasies that this market's just going to keep going up forever and ever and ever. And really, most of those people have never experienced how bad and just gut-riching awful the market can become for investors. They didn't live through 2008, they didn't live through 2018, probably didn't even tr start trading until after the 2020 bottom of last year. If you go back to 2000, I was there and I was around there investing in the stock market when the stock market bubble burst in 2000. So these things do happen. They don't happen every day. And usually when they do happen is when people think that it's outrageous to call something a stock market bubble because you start living in this fantasy land that stonks only go up. Heard that one before? But again, the reason why I do these YouTube videos is not to make you feel good. I'm going to touch upon your insecurities about the stock market and about your money because your money's invested in the stock market and of course you want it to do good for you. And when somebody like me comes along and says, hey, there may be a stock bubble, just, just look out for one. It gets people all riled up and thrown into a little tizzy. And that's okay because it should cause you to, to look inside yourself and ask yourself, okay, am I being blinded to a, a reality that I'm just not seeing? And those are good questions to be asking you. And that's what we're going to dissect here today, along with the S&P 500 on multiple time frames with the NASDAQ 100, the Russell 2000. I'm going to look at the T2108 chart, and I'm going to look at some bubble plays here. I'm going to show you what these things look like and why I believe we're in the stock market bubble. So let's start with those right now. This is a weekly chart of Square. You go all the way back to 2015 where it started trading. You know, it had a pretty good rally. It goes from like $10, $15 a share all the way up to 95. And then it has a period of consolidation because honestly, it just got a little bit too hot. And then you had COVID strike. It saw a lot of its value go right down the tubes. But post COVID, what did it do? A little bit crazy there, don't you think? Oh, what is it? Yeah. That's a bubble. Okay, that's a bubble. When things go well beyond the imagination, that's crazy. I mean, look, look at that big rally that I was just talking about in 2017 and 2018 that I said was amazing. It's nothing compared to what we've seen of late. Here's another example, and it's probably the best example. John Deere stock, DE. You go all the way back to like 2010, 2009, this stock was just one of the more boring stocks. Yeah, it had a couple of periods where it rallied pretty nicely, but it, it just kind of went along ho-hum. But you get some COVID action going on and what happens? That's what happens. Oh. Check this out. 
it has just gone straight parabolic. This, this is not normal in a stock market. It just doesn't happen. So when you get the pump, you also get the dump. And right now we haven't got the dump yet, but we're getting close to it. Look guys, I could do this thing forever. I'm not trying to say stocks shouldn't rally. Of course they should rally, but it's the manner in which they rally and then under the circumstances that they rally. You go all the way back to 2015 Wayfair. It was a growth stock. It took a huge hit during the whole COVID crisis. But then all of a sudden, it just goes from like $20 a share all the way up to $300 plus a share where it's trading at today. Oh, it's the beloved Tesla. And I know I'm gonna ruffle a lot of feathers with this one. Guys, I, I trade Tesla, I like Tesla, I own a Tesla. But again, I'm trying to be impartial. And in being impartial, I gotta just point out the truths. Tesla has always been a growth play. And it's done really, really well going back to 2013. If you were an early investor, you're probably retired right now. But Look what it does post COVID, totally nuts. Uh. I mean, that that's the kind of stuff that you're seeing in this bubble economy. And what's interesting too, if you look at the queues going back to 2000 when we had the dot-com, it was really a very aggressive market for about 10 years. But it wasn't until really the last year and a half where things just got absolutely crazy. And right now, it kind of feels like we're in that last year and a half. Yes, 2009 market bottom from the 2008 Great Recession up until the COVID sell-off, market was pretty darn good. Okay, it was aggressive. It was constantly putting in new gains, but it was putting in reasonable gains. Now, post COVID, markets was up 75% off of the March lows. This is that year and a half that we're into right now that's starting to feel like, okay, we're probably going to see a bull off top somewhere in the next six to 12 months. And why does it catch so many people off guard and, and so many people not expecting it? It's because they bought into the market hype. But enough about bubbles. Let's go ahead and look at these charts here, the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, and the Russell 2000. But before we get into those, let me tell you about my YouTube membership that you can join down below by clicking the join button just right below this video. Click on it and you're gonna get access to all of my market research each and every week. That's going to include regular updates on the S&P 500, the NASDAQ and the Russell 2000, as well as my market reversal indicator. On top of that, you're going to get weekly updates on all the FANG stocks that includes Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Google, and I'm gonna throw in Microsoft and Tesla as a chaser. But then when it gets more into the specific trades and what I'm doing each and every week, I'm gonna let you know what are on my bullish and bearish watch lists. And I'm gonna update those twice a week for you, as well as give you daily trade setups that I'm following as potential trades and the most interesting charts that I come across each and every day. So make sure to click join below and sign up today. Guys, I've been talking about this bearish wedge on SPY for a while now. I talked about, hey, we haven't really broken out of it yet. And it doesn't mean that we can't. I've seen plenty of bearish wedges so far this year form. And what does the market do? It blows right through them. Again, we had one that was pretty big and substantial forming off of the March lows. What did the market do? It blew through it this week. So this bearish wedge pattern is dead. Now, going forward, you have this nice little megaphone pattern here. And what you're going to see here is with the Friday closing, that nice little ramp right in the final half hour, you're testing a pretty significant short-term resistance level. Can it break through that as well? These are pretty hard to do. And while I say they're hard to do, the market has shown that nothing is impossible so far here in 2021. But if you start getting a correction, watch for a retest of the lower channel band there. Also remember, we got earnings kicking off this week. We're going to start off with those banks. So we're going to see right away whether or not the market can sustain some of these gains into the earnings season. Now let's check out the NASDAQ 100, the QQQ chart. Now going back to February of this year, the declining resistance, we saw a breakout last week of it and huge follow through to the upside this week with new closing all time highs. So that's a big deal, big development, month and a half of choppiness wiped out in just seven days of gains. Incredible. Now you have the rising trend line that was broken back in February being retested here. The underside of it. Will the NASDAQ be able to push through or will it just ride the underside or even worse, sell off dramatically as a result of a test rejection? So be following this old rising trend line that was previously broken off of the March lows. And if you do see a rejection at that old trend line, you set up the potential for a double top pattern. Nowhere even near forming one at this point some ways it's not even worth mentioning on this video, but if you do see that rejection at the old trend line, it does create the potential for a double top going forward. Now let's look at the Russell because it's completely different than the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. And why is that? Because it doesn't welcome the, the FANG stocks into its index. You're talking about small caps here and the small caps are struggling and they've been struggling for about a couple of months now. And what's becoming very noticeable is this head and shoulders pattern that's forming. You have a neckline and you have a left shoulder, a head and a right shoulder. Now. What I don't like about the head shoulders of late is that going for about six, seven, eight years now, these head and shoulders patterns have been very, very unreliable. 
Historically, they're great topping patterns, but over the past decade, they've been very questionable and what you end up getting, and a lot of this is because of the Fed intervention too. The Fed has been more active in the markets than ever before, and when you start getting to these technical breaking points, somehow or another, the Fed comes in and stimulates the stock market. And here again, we have a big neckline. That goes all the way back to February. And if it gets tested, I wouldn't put it past the market to all of a sudden put together a, a dramatic bounce. You got that off of the NASDAQ, and it's very possible that you see that in the Russell 2000 as well. I'm continuing to update you guys on the T2108 because what I really wanna see is participation out of more stocks in this market. Now the T2108 is gonna measure the percentage of stocks that are trading above their 40 day moving average. When you have a low percentage of stocks trading above their 40 day moving average, it doesn't mean that there's a lot of stocks participating in the market rally. So when you have the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ trading at all time highs, but you have this T2108 saying, hey, only 54% of stocks are above their 40 day moving average right now, it tells you that there's a lot of stocks that's not really showing the same vigor and enthusiasm as the market indices are showing. And right now, only 54% is not that great. It was just the previous week that we were trading down in the 30s. So there's not a lot of enthusiasm for this market that's continuing to eke out new all time highs. And this is one of the biggest problems because when I see these things, eventually the market does break. We got it right before COVID last year too. Check out what the market looked like before COVID of last year. It was struggling for market participation. It was getting more and more difficult for stocks to climb higher with this market. And then all of a sudden COVID hit and everything just went to crap. And this market's already exceeding the expectations for this year. The average analyst only expected the S&P 500 to climb up to 4,099 as their prediction prior to the start of this year. Where is it at right now? 4,128. So it's already above that. And we're like barely three months into this new year. So. With all that said, man, I'm, I come across super bearish and somebody has mentioned that before in a previous comment. Hey, you come across as like a closet bear or somebody that doesn't like this market at all. It's not that. I, I'm just always aware of the risk. I'm always looking for the risk. I'm always looking for the downside because that's what preserves me in the stock market. And I'm, I'm trying to tell you, it doesn't mean that it, you can't trade it right now. It just means that every trade you go into, you need to be able to manage the risk and know how you're going to manage it before you ever get into the trade. Use stop losses because when the market does come down, Okay, you get stopped out for a little bit of a loss, but you're not gonna be taking it to the woodshed like the people did in the dot-com bubble when they saw a lot of their investments go straight to zero. And I'm not trying to scare you, although I kind of hope that I am because I think a healthy fear of this market is a good thing to understand that there is downside risk to this market even though that it's not showing it right now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like and subscribe. That really helps me continue to put out these new videos each and every week. I also started uploading podcast videos. So check out my first one that I just did this past week. It's awesome. And make sure you're listening to my podcast as well. Let me know down in the comments below. What was your best trade of the week? I want to hear all about it. I want to know what you're looking at going into the week ahead. What stocks are you most excited about? Thank you guys and God bless.